Hey guys, this is video three, organic compounds and their enzyme. This is a very important podcast. Make sure you play it as many times as you need to make sure you understand it. All right, first of all, let's talk about what organic means. The only element that defines living thing or the one element that defines living thing is carbon. Carbon is found in every living thing, and there's a reason why carbon is so important. First of all, if we go back to what we were talking about the other day and about carbon, um, carbon is number six, so that means it has two electrons in its first energy level, and it has four. One, two, three, four in its second energy level. This is important because this makes it able to find with almost every element because it can either gain four electrons to become stable, lose four electrons to become stable, share four electrons. So carbon is found in every living thing and it makes it very important. Now, another thing is any compound that contains carbon is said to be organic. So think about that. When you spread organic fertilizer on your flower bed, you're really sp spreading hog manure or some type of waste or some type of product that's been made from a living material. You know, if an animal were to die and you were to put it out on your grass, it would be organic fertilizer. So organic means that it comes from the earth. It has carbon in it. Um, if it does not contain carbon, it's inorganic. All right. Now let's talk about the four types of organic compounds. Now, first of all, just from the title, you ought to be able to know that every one of these compounds contains carbon. The first organic compound is carbohydrates. And from the name, you can actually tell the elements that comprise it. You would anticipate that it has carbon because the carbo part, right, has carbon. And then the hydrate, hydrate means to add water. So carbohydrates have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And the hydrogen and oxygen are actually in a two-to-one ratio. Now, I just put this up here for your own information. I'm not going to ask you on the test what it's made of, but I just want you to see the similarities between each one of these organic compounds. It's made of carbohydrates are made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Now, you do need to know what their monomer is. Now, the monomer, let me explain what a monomer is. If you think of a single brick, for example, that brick is what we would consider a monomer. But if you put a bunch of bricks together, you would end up building a brick wall, right? Well, in this analogy, the monomer is one of these bricks. All right, and whatever it's the monomer of, let's say the carbohydrate, is the entire wall. Okay, so think of it in you. Cells would be your monomer. Your body would be the organic compound that's making up. All right, so the monomer is the simplest part of a carbohydrate or of any of these organic molecules that have the properties of those organic molecules. So the monomer of a carbohydrate is a mono, which means one, saccharide, Saccharide actually means sugar, so it's one sugar or a single sugar. So carbohydrates are anything that has sugar in them, so you should be thinking about that. Um, their function is to give quick energy. You know, I coached football for many years, and one of the things that we, all, we like to give our kids before football games was, you know, we give them spaghetti because pasta has a lot of carbs in it. It gives them quick energy. Uh, I've known at halftime for us to give them oranges, orange slices or even pieces of chocolate to give quick energy. So those are carbohydrates. Um, an example of a carbohydrate is glucose, starch, cellulose. Now if you'll notice, two of these three words end in the O-S-E ending. Kind of log that down. Anytime you see O-S-E at the end of a word, it means it's a sugar. And if it's a sugar, that means it's a carbohydrate. Okay? Alright. The next organic compound is a lipid. Lipids um, are made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Uh, it's just a little bit different ratio, but you look, the same elements that was in monosaccharide. Like I said, don't get too caught up in that. Um, the monomer of a lipid is a glycerol and three fatty acids. Um, you know, if you look down here at this picture, it has a picture of one. Um, here is the glycerol and the three fatty acid chains. I've actually even seen one of these drawn on a mobile choice question before. Um, you know, that would be the monomer of a lipid. That would be a glycerol and three fatty acids. So know how to draw that. Now, the function of a lipid is to store energy for long-term use. 
uh, insulation and protection. You know, if I was dropped off in Alaska or Antarctica or wherever, I'd have a storehouse of energy because I have an excess of lipids. I'd be insulated, so I wouldn't be as cold as someone very skinny. And I'd have a protection, you know, kind of like the Pillsbury Doughboy. You know, you pop me in the belly, it doesn't hurt as much. I might just giggle a little bit. But those are examples of lipids, now, or the functions of lipids. Now, examples would be fats and oils. So that's probably what we call them in Dubin County. We'd probably call a lipid a fat or an oil. Now, the third organic compound are proteins. Now, proteins are made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and sometimes sulfur. But you notice the same core backbone there. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen are in each one of these. Now, the monomer is the amino acid. Now, there are 20 amino acids, and we'll learn more about these when we get into DNA. But amino acids make proteins. Now, the function is to build muscle, as you can tell by the picture. Um, that's one thing proteins do. Second thing is transportation. Now, I put this one in here because hemoglobin is a protein that carries oxygen in the blood. And the third thing, it speeds up chemical reactions with, because there are things called enzymes. Enzymes are proteins. Now, we're going to talk about enzymes just a little bit on the next slide or two. Enzymes are proteins that act as a biological catalyst. Now, you might be asking yourself, what is a catalyst? A catalyst is a substance that speeds up a chemical reaction. I kind of think of it like this. You know, if we had, if you had um, trying to make wood, you know, burn, and you were just to add a single match, I know you love my drawings, add a single match to the wood, it would burn, but it might take a little bit of time. But now if you add a catalyst to it, if you add a container of gasoline to this fire, it's going to burn a lot faster. So gasoline is kind of like a catalyst or kind of like an enzyme. So equations like photosynthesis are going to take place, but they're not going to take place as quickly as they do when the enzymes are present. So enzymes speed up chemical reactions. Now a little bit about enzymes. There's a thing called an enzyme substrate complex, which I'm going to show you on the next picture, next slide. That basically is this. There's, each enzyme has a particular um, a particular substrate that it attaches to, like an enzyme that will attack proteins, an enzyme that will attack lipids, will attack whatever. So it acts like a lock and a key mechanism. You know, if you think about locking the key, if the key's messed up, the lock, it won't unlock the lock. Well, in an enzyme substrate complex, the enzyme's messed up, it won't attach to the substrate, and it won't do what it's supposed to do. Um, now, enzymes can be regulated by pH, by heat, by how much you put in there, the concentration of it. They can even be turned on and off. But now, if you heat up an enzyme too much, it does what we call denaturing. It changes the shape of it. Now, look at this picture here, and I'll explain a little bit more. You can see the substrate here. We can think of this as anything. Maybe I ate a Big Mac. And you see the substrate, and it has teeth on it here. These teeth are going to fit perfectly, you know, going to fit perfectly with this enzyme here. And when they fit together, the purpose of this enzyme evidently was to split up this substrate into two different products to break it down. Now, if we came and denatured it, the teeth instead of looking like this might, might look like this. Now, if you had teeth like this, they wouldn't join with the substrate, so the enzyme would no longer work. So now, enzymes are all, in, are all around our body and out in the wild. They regulate a lot of different processes. Enzymes are reusable. You know, if we go back to the screen before, you notice that the enzyme was a thing that stayed the same. So enzymes are reusable. Um, once they get done breaking down a certain product, they'll go and find that substrate again. They'll break it down again. So they continue over and over again. The last organic molecule is a nucleic acid, and it's made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Notice once again, there's a CHO, um, so it has some of the same elements in it. The nucleotide is the monomer of a nucleic acid, and a nucleic acid stores genetic information. It's probably the most important organic molecule to your body, or to us, because it's how we pass on what we are to the next generation. Um, examples are DNA, deoxyribose nucleic acid, and RNA, uh, which are ribose nucleic acid. Now here's a picture. You can see the DNA over on the DNA, the DNA double-stranded structure. These are uh, a nucleic acid. Now let me show you a nucleotide. A nucleotide is made up of a phosphate, a sugar, and a nitrogen base. Now you don't really know what this is yet, 
But here's the nitrogen base, here's the phosphate and sugar. If you'll notice, here's a null nucleotide. There's a null nucleotide. There's a null nucleotide. So kind of like I was telling you a while ago, when you get all these added up together, you make the DNA molecule. Okay, so it builds on top of one another. All right, the last thing I want to tell you is just kind of a little bit of refresher from past science courses. Uh, chemical reactions. And the thing I want you to know is what the difference is between a reactant and a product. A reactant is what you start with. Ooh, I can't spell. What you start with. And a product is what you end with. So if you look here, carbon, carbon dioxide plus water goes to H2CO3. In this equation, the reactants are carbon dioxide and water. The product is H2CO3. All right, so make sure you can identify those on the test if I were to give them to you. You know, reactants are usually on the left-hand side of the arrow. Products are usually on the right-hand side of the arrow. Uh, let me give you one more just to make sure. For example, I can give you uh, 6CO2 plus 6H2O. Go to C6H12O6 plus 6O2. This is the photosynthesis equation. Now, in the photosynthesis equation, these two would be the reactants and these two would be the products. It depends on which side of the arrow they are on. Okay? All right. I hope that helps.